Hello. Well, I know the notifications must be working for this stream if you've joined. It's only been on for about 10 seconds, so that's good. Because I had an issue where I did a stream. I can't remember if it was last week or whenever. And basically, uh, nobody got notifications for it. And it took absolutely ages for people to get in. So I'll just give everybody a couple more minutes to get in before we start talking about anything properly. But, um... Good to see notifications are working. I did get asked, well, I don't do more streams in the evening, and it's just because it's easier for me to do streams at this time of day. Um, so, um, you know, I more, normally do the streams um, at this time of day just because it's easier for me to do it. There's generally less people on. Um, so, um, you know, for that reason, it's actually easier to chat with people. But I will be doing some in the evening again, but I don't know which days that will be. It's just going to be when I've got an evening where I'm definitely going to be in. I've got free time. Then I'll get one done there. So, yeah, hello to everybody. I haven't been to Bosnia. Um, I haven't actually been to any of the former Yugoslavian countries. That's one of the places I keep meaning to go, but I haven't been to yet. I definitely think next time I save up for a holiday, it will be to America. Just because, you know, everybody knows I love America. Uh, there's not so much of theme today, but... There might be a couple of things I want to talk about, but we'll see what happens with the conversation. Um, well, it depends what you mean by events like Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl. Do you mean like, because um, the Chernobyl disaster is a real thing, obviously. Um, but a lot of the Stalker's plot is a lot more sci-fi than that. Um, so a lot more of the sci-fi elements, no. But like obviously the realistic elements of Stalker, yeah, because they did happen in reality. Hello. Yeah, I haven't been to Indonesia either. I don't think I've actually been anywhere in Asia. One of my friends is going on holiday to Japan soon, so he'll better worth fun doing that. But I've not been anywhere in sort of Asia or East Asia. Uh, I'm from um, I'm from England. Uh, I thought most people knew that. Uh, Russian digiflora. Um, Probably. There's a Russian camo I really like, and it's not the Digiflora one, but I can't actually think of its name. It's the one that they have put on Gorka suits before. It's like the green, brown, and I think slightly yellow one. It might be green, brown, and white. Um, it's mostly green with like little patches of brown and white on it, and I think that's a really good camo. So, yep. Yeah. Uh, good to see everybody sort of getting in now. Yeah, I get quite a lot of uh, viewers from the Balkans or former Yugoslavia. I can actually have a look if you want and say what percentage of viewers that is. Well, I think it's because I've probably done videos on a lot of the former um, sort of Eastern Bloc sort of military stuff. So that's probably why, in all honesty. Okay, let's have a look at um, which thing is it on the uh, analytics. Traffic sources, is it that one or is that where your views come from? And that's the one that's like suggested videos and everything else. But if I click, uh, this will still tell me. Okay, so let's do views, not watch time. Okay, so USA is always first. Um, United States, 210,000 views in the last 20 odd days, uh, 25 days. Britain is always second at 79,000, but that's still a long way behind the US, it's not even half. Weirdly, I get a lot of views from India and Australia, uh, but if we look at things, uh, if I can find them on the map, it's because they're so small it's hard to click on. Serbia is like 3,000 odd views, Bosnia is 1,000 odd something views, Albania is 300 odd views. But I get a lot more from like Hungary, Slovakia, and Poland, a lot more from Poland, actually. The weird thing is I still get some views from uh, some African countries and things like that as well. Quite a lot of views from Brazil, surprisingly. Um, it's good for my geography to actually look at where I get views from, because it reminds me of where some of the countries are, especially the ones like in Africa, where they change quite often. Surprised I get a lot of views from Saudi Arabia. Obviously, no views from North Korea. <laughs> that doesn't surprise me, so Kim doesn't watch my videos. Thousand odd views from South Korea, thousand odd views from Japan. Quite a lot of views from Thailand for some reason. Um, Indonesia, I get 12,000 odd views from Indonesia, so 
um, Malaysia. I get a lot of views from there. So I'm popular there, I have no idea, but I guess YouTube algorithm suggested my videos to people from there. Uh, I have a Discord server, it's for patrons only, but even then it's um, there's a lot of shit flinging and like shit talking on there, so whether or not I even keep that open in the long run, I don't know. Because I don't want to be one of those people who like moderates it massively, but you know, people always try and start arguments with each other on there, so um, you know, I don't really have any interest in Discord servers. Uh, the thing is, I've, um, I can't, like, make up stuff like that. Like, all the stuff I've talked about with those is stuff that's really happened. And, you know, like, most of the time, nothing weird and out of the ordinary happens. Um, if any of you listen to 13 o'clock podcast or watch 13 o'clock podcast, they did, um, my video from where I work there, because I sent that into them and they talked about it on there. Um, so, you know, if you want a more professional kind of summary of it, where I sent them in all the information... Um, Stalker 2 is coming out, but it's like in 2021 or something, and then we don't even know if it's, uh, any good. Yeah, I'd go to Romania at some point if I could afford to, because like I said, I've been to Hungary and Poland and, uh, Czech Republic, uh, Slovakia and everything. So I would go there eventually. Um, speaking about Romania, I am buying a Dacia or a Dacia, um, this weekend. to be my actual car, because they're cheap and they work, so. Um... Yeah, okay, it might be SS Leto then. Let me have a look. Because when I, people say that, I keep thinking it's a World War II camera. Yeah, you're right, it is SS Leto. Thank you, that's the name for it then. Yeah, that is the one I really like, SS Leto. So yeah, sorry about that. It's just when people say that, I normally think they're on about some of the German World War II camos. And I do like 44 dot and things like that, but... Um... Yeah, the one that's green with, yeah, the two, like, the shade of yellow and the shade of brown on. That's the one I really like, and when I've seen videos of people testing that, it's been really effective. So, if I could find um, it for a sensible price for sale, I might get a set of that at some point, because I reckon that would be really good. Uh, you're not on my ban list as Neo Papa, so I don't know why you can't comment, but it's YouTube then. Because you made a comment the other day on my video, and I replied to it, and then that comment disappeared. So I've not blocked you, but maybe YouTube doesn't let you post, I don't know. Yeah, Metro Exodus looks like, um, might be good. I've got loads of things to sharpen knives. I've got, um, a bench grinder, which lots of people don't like, but I still use them on knives. If they're really blunt. I've got um, a couple of whetstones of various types. You know, like the ones where you drag the knife across it at an angle. And the ones I also like that a lot of people don't like is like the pocket sharpeners and the desk sharpeners. Um, so, because I find if they got the right angle for the knife, you can just pull them through and it's nice and easy. But I know like, um, lots of people don't like them. Yeah, um, when I finished off paying for my new car, I might actually get a new PC. I'm tempted to just get a really good pre-built. Because um, with my computer, I'd have to cannibalize more parts and everything else to upgrade it. So um, it's got to the stage where I think I'd keep this PC as a spare and then just get a really good uh, new PC. Because you can, for um, like £1,600 now, get ones of like the 1070 Ti in. And one of the top like Intel desktop processors with like water cooling and everything else, so they look pretty good, you know. Now, as I said, I quit smoking. I've still got all the stuff, but I did quit smoking. Um, if you bought one in the UK, you shouldn't have admitted that you're going to prison. Uh, delete your comment if you're in the UK and you bought a taser, but tasers are classed as Section 5 firearms in the UK, so you cannot own one. So if you are in the UK, delete your own comment before you get gulagged. Yep. <laughs> I've, I've not read out your username for that reason. Uh, I'd be quite uh, dubious about doing a meet and greet, considering I get a lot of death threats through here, so probably not. I might w uh, go and meet Weapon Collector at some point, because he doesn't live too far from me, and he's been doing YouTube videos long enough that I know he's legit. Um, there's a couple of knives I've got that are good quality. One I bought, I haven't done a video on, I actually bought this from Weapon Collector, is a Tangram, if it's pronounced like that, which I think are Japanese steel knives. Um, it's stainless steel, but it's Japanese steel, and this is really good as a little pocket folder. Um, 
But I've also got some of the Sheffield knives, like the Sheffield version of the Fairbine Sykes fighting knife and the Sheffield version of like the Israeli style K bar. And they're really nice knives. Um, but for the most point, I just get cheap knives because if I lose them or break them, it doesn't matter. Like, I like the open mills and the Moras for that reason. I don't, I've never had a Google phone, I've always just used uh, Motorola's. Um, well, people can get guns in the UK, but for the most part they're illegal, because this is the thing, when you put strict gun control in, it means only criminals get guns. Yeah, if I can get an M3, it's, I always get this asked this every stream, right? If I can get a gas mask, I'll do videos on it, but I'm not going to spend loads of money on it, or, you know, I just either can't. Yeah, I like the um, I like the Spetsnaz style titanium helmets. Yeah, they're very cool, but I said no way I could afford them, and there's lots of fakes around. Uh, I don't know which sort of 3M adapter that is. Is that the one that lets you put the 3M filters on 40 millimeters, or put 40 millimeter filters on 3M masks? But if it's put the 3M filters on a um, 40 millimeter thing, then it would work. But I wouldn't really recommend it. British heroes. I'm trying to think. Who have we had that's been really good? I mean, I sort of like Churchill, but everybody likes Churchill. But then lots of people debate whether Britain should have gone into World War Two or not. So that's an, another thing. But I do like Churchill myself. And he's buried not far from where I live. And he was born not far from where I live, actually, as well. Yeah, the S6 is a very good mask, but a bit outdated. But it's, you know, 40mm NATO, so you can't complain there. Uh, GP5 is much better than the GP4. Because um, GP5 is like a much better standardised mask. It's got a defogging system in the GP5. Um, it fits heads better, you know, or stuff like that. Apparently we're going to have a heat wave for like a week in the UK at the moment. I'll have a look at the weather report and see how long it goes on for. But I'm sure I've said to a lot of people I like the cold more than the heat. Because at least when it's cold, you can just put on more layers. But when it's hot, you're kind of a bit screwed when it keeps getting hotter and hotter. And I know a lot of people will say, oh, the temperature in the UK is nothing. But remember, you get um, used to temperatures, you get a lot. So I'm a lot more used to cold weather conditions than I am for warm weather conditions. It's not too bad today, because I think I'm already acclimatising to it. But... Yeah, there's going to be like several 33 degree days in a row. I'm out volunteering tomorrow. Oh, it's going to be cloudy, so that's good. Um, humidity's down a bit. I don't know what the pollen is, because that's one of the worst bits for me. But... Yeah, it's going to be hot for like an entire week yet still. I'm already wanting winter to come back. Of course, I know William Wallace is, being because uh, he's obviously a Scot. Um, there's not many others I'd be able to name off the top of my head, though. Um, but with the whole Ulster Scot and Irish thing, if you're trying to get it into the uh, like you know Orange Parade type things, we're definitely not going to go into that because, as I said, we need to be very careful with politics on here, um, especially because lots of people like to start arguments about that. Um, so obviously I'm not saying you're trying to do that, I'm just sort of saying as a warning, we'll not go down the path of uh, talking about orange men and stuff like that. Yeah, 223 and 556 are the same thing. I mean obviously 223 is the imperial version of 556. But I know often it's like the pressure of the round, isn't it? Like 556 because it's like the NATO name for it. It's going to be a high pressure version where some of the 223 ones are a bit weaker. No, I've not heard of Rocky Volovic. I've not listened to that. The best gas mask totally depends what you can get access to, what you're comfortable wearing. Alright, Boris.
they shoot from the same gun, so they're the same caliber as far as I'm concerned, because 223 is the actual metric, um, our Imperial name, isn't it? But like I was saying, I know that the um, 556 NATO is slightly different due to power reasons, but fundamentally it is the exact same round. Um, well, they're not going to want to release Tommy, are they? They're hoping he's going to get killed in prison because we live in a police state. Um, whether or not he does get free for whatever reason, I don't know. Um, but, you know, that's the thing. Um, the UK is essentially a police state now. There was a really disgusting video I saw um, the other day where um, there were some parents campaigning because their kids had been killed in a terrorist attack, but the uh, guy who killed them, uh, they put it down to like a much minor thing, saying it was like um, dangerous driving, not like obviously, you know, deliberate uh, terrorist hit and run. Uh, like as a terrorist attack, um, so the guy's got much less a sentence, and you know nobody's admitting that the kids got killed in a terrorist attack. And then when they were campaigning about that, um, you know all the police turned up. Oh, you can't be doing this. Blah 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 blah. Uh, pump action rather than lever action, but I've not actually seen pump action rifles, and I've not seen lever action shotguns. I know lever action shotguns probably do exist. Um, what do you mean by the extensions? If you're on about 60 and 40 millimeter masks, there are adapters for them. There's also, I think it's the Dutch Model K that takes both models of filters because they have double screws. That's pretty cool. I mean, if I was to get a 2.2, I'd probably, or 22, I'd get a um, Ruger 10.22 because I know they're the really popular Rugers just for like sporting and plinking. Just to warn you, the reason that guy got blocked is he's asking, do I support certain terrorist groups? If you ask anything like that, you're instantly getting blocked, um, because it should be common sense why you don't ask questions like that. Hello. Yeah, the problem is as well, obviously, is because I'm in the UK, none of this gun stuff I'm actually able to get at all, um, well, at least legally, <laughs> so... Um you know, sometimes I get a bit lost when people are talking about all the conversion kits because although as much as I know a lot about military rifles, civilian rifles aren't as interesting to me because there's no chance I can have them. There's no such thing as bulletproof gas masks. I've been uh, I've been across this quite a few times. Um, well, in theory, you can put a suppressor on almost any rifle, but there's no point unless it's subsonic. Which do you mean by the Mark 1 gas mask? Do you mean the light anti-gas respirator Mark 1? Because I don't have a mask simply called the Mark 1. But that would be because it's a universal thing they put across all the masks. Uh, I've explained quite a few times about filters, how they expire and that, so I'd suggest watching those videos, but... Particle filters expire over time when just dust and crap gets into them. Uh, so then they don't expire, but they get clogged up. Charcoal is the one that gets kind of just absorbed stuff. But like I said, John, don't start bringing up stuff like the IRA, because if you keep mentioning it, you're going to get a block. And I'm not saying that to be against you. I'm just saying that I'd rather we not start talking about terrorists on these streams. Because um, this is what always happens. Somebody will bring something up and then it would derail the entire conversation where people, you know, keep talking about it. Yeah, so, as I said, I'll delete your previous comment. Um, I'm not going to remove you, but I'm going to remove the comment. Um, oh, I deleted the wrong comment because the chat's moving up. But yeah, don't, um, uh, yeah, just don't keep mentioning stuff like that again.
All right, I'm pretty sure you're a shield bleach um, because you don't keep asking about illegal weapons on here. So you've you've deserved your block. Well done. I've told you already not to mention if you've actually got anything illegal, but you have to keep bringing it up. So I'm pretty sure you're an idiot. Uh, the Soviets put asbestos in gas masks because it worked, basically. It was cheap to put in the particle filters and it blocked particles. As I've mentioned it in videos before, but it made total sense why they put asbestos in masks at the time. It's just, you know, in hindsight it was a bad idea. Alright, cool crazy chicken guy. Also, thank you because I know you support me on Patreon, so thank you for that. Um... We haven't said all that much interesting in the stream so far. I don't know how long you've been on. We've had to block a few people for talking about terrorism and um, buying illegal weapons. But other than that, it's been pretty standard. Uh, I prefer polycarbonate just because polycarbonate and gas mask lenses and everything is the strongest material that they put in them at the moment, I think in terms of like how resistant they are to being damaged and everything else. Um, so yeah, polycarbonate is um, pretty good material. Yeah, I don't have a problem with ducks, I'm not particularly fond of, of them either. You see them most times you're at a river or a park or whatever. But you can't even just, you know, legally go and shoot them in the UK if they're in a the park, if that's what you're sort of saying, or getting it. Alright, cool. Glad you're in the stream. No, I've never seen an armoured gas mask. Like I said, the closest you're going to come to that is having a polycarbonate lens that, you know, can resist being hit by things like a riot shield can. But because gas masks have to be flexible and essentially comfortable, you can't really make them armoured. You could wear, like, a riot helmet on top of certain gas masks. Um, but, you know, you can't really... Um, I have no idea, I don't have, other than the riot helmets, I don't have any of those, like, Russian titanium helmets, so you'd have to get the helmet, and I'm sure a GP5 and helmet mask would work with them, but lots of other masks, side-loading filters wouldn't. Cool, yeah, Zodiacs are meant to be very heavy and uncomfortable, but very good in terms of levels of protection, because, you know, it's just thick, heavy rubber. Did you actually break your hand, or did you just hurt it? Because, um, you know. Yeah, there's, I've seen armoured, like, face masks, yeah, just like there's the titanium helmets and whatever else that are, like, you know, an actual thing that covers your face that stops some calibers. Um, but there's not actually armoured gas masks just simply for the reason that you can't really do it. Yeah, you got, you got obviously got armoured tanks and armoured vehicles with positive pressure NBC systems, but... I've already said I'll use my CT-12 if I ever need to use a mask. Like I said, when it comes to radiation, no mask is really better than any others, because all of them are going to protect you from alpha. Depending on the thickness of the rubber of the mask, they might protect you from beta radiation, but that's it. Uh, you've got no gamma. Uh, they're not overrated at all. Um, if you watch videos of those Russian helmets, there's lots of times where people shoot at them with like 5.56 and 7.62, uh, like the Russian 139, um, and the helmets actually withstand them at fairly close range. Uh, there's no military helmet other than that that would do that. Yeah, there's lots of masks and helmets where you could wear the helmet with the mask. That's not a problem. It's just, you know, there's not armoured gas masks in that sense. Yeah, I've said before you can use raincoats as improvised NBC suits. Because if you've got one of those, like, oil skin... Um, raincoats or like the plastic material raincoats, they will resist chemicals. Not as well as an NBC suit, but it's much better than nothing. Yeah, I mean, most modern military helmets will survive um, 22, but there's um, videos in America where people actually buy, you know, like the channels with loads of views, so they make loads of money and they can afford to. They actually buy the Russian titanium helmets and shoot them with quite a few calibers, and I'm surprised how much abuse they take. Yeah, only if it hits them at an angle. Level 3A Kevlar is going to get absolutely destroyed by actual rifle rounds. If you watch uh, any, like, the good channels, like Paul Harrell's, 
Um, he'll demonstrate, you know, like how Kevlar is not as good as people think it is. Um, he even did a video where he got like a level 3A vest, put it behind a load of cover and then demonstrated the rifle will still go straight through the cover and the vests. Um, it's a reason, there's a reason trauma plates are put in modern body armor, but the whole point is, you know, you need to learn how to, um, I guess, lay prone and aim your rifle, not rely on your armor. The whole point of vests like that is to stop pistol rounds and stop um, shrapnel, not to um, stop rifle rounds. Uh, supposedly the SAS used the CT-12, but I'm not sure. Obviously they used to use the S-10 and SF-10. When they modernised the Scotch ESR, supposedly, and I'm saying supposedly because I can't find any good sources on this, um, but I've not found anything contrary either. The SAS says we're not using a piece of shit like the GSR, we, we still want Avon masks, and because it's the SAS they gave them either FM-12s or CT-12s. That's what I've heard anyway, you know. But I said I can't. Yeah, is there actual Osprey vest with the panels in them? Because most of the time when I've seen Osprey vests for sale, they do not have the armour in. It's like just literally a liner. Although I am tempted to buy an empty modern uh, sort of vest thing just so I can put my own panels in it anyway. It's, you know, the Soviet titanium helmets. Um, I'm not sure which models, but the big titanium helmets, it really doesn't matter as long as you're not getting shot directly in the visor. The, um, they are not practically the same. A titanium helmet offers so much better protection than Kevlar. I don't think you can quite grasp this. If you see um, a titanium plate being shot with a rifle compared to a Kevlar panel, you cannot compare it. The titanium is so much stronger. But of course, it weighs more than Kevlar. But a standard NATO 3A Kevlar helmet is not the same thing as a titanium helmet. But also, the Russian main soldiers just have Kevlar helmets as well because you couldn't produce titanium helmets that are good on a big scale. Right, cool, I will have a look into that, the art of self-destruction, because, um, uh, you know, that's kind of quite interesting that you can get um, them for... Right, um, I'm not sure if you're being an idiot on purpose or just a troll, but you can literally go and watch videos of titanium helmets being shot by rifles, and the titanium helmets will stop rifle rounds, because it's a thick piece of titanium, but the Kevlar doesn't, because it's a thin, you know, aramid fibre. But again, I think you're just an idiot, so bye. Yeah, um, I mean, just like I got a brand new GSR, there's lots of stuff like that turns up on eBay. No, sadly I haven't been to Chernobyl, but would love to go. But when I was planning on going to Chernobyl, all the problems happened in Ukraine, uh, or, the U or the Ukraine, depending on how you like it to be called. Um, so, you know, lots of travel companies stopped doing things. Again, it's somewhere I'd like to go, but you'd have to wait for the situation to calm down. Yeah, I mean, obviously you can mine titanium, and what, lots of the biggest titanium mines are in Russia. Alright, see ya. John Doe. Uh, lots of gases can go through a gas mask um, filter. It's just um, uh, basically, like I said before, filters don't really stop gas as people think of gas. They stop vapors because most chemical weapons are actually vapors, not gas. It's the reason that you use a rebreather or like a positive pressure mask if you're actually, you know, um, well, not positive pressure, but um, supplied air mask, um, like a self-contained breathing apparatus. Um, that's the reason, you know, uh, you wear those sort of things, um, is if you're in a situation where you're exposed to chemicals that can't be stopped with a regular filter, but for the most part, if you're in a ventilated area, a military filter's good enough, because most military chemical weapons are vapours, that the filter will stop. What's the random question mark for? Well, if I if I went to Chernobyl, I'd do it all properly, so there's no chance I'm going to get, you know, foiled from going in when I get there. 
You can buy titanium. Have a look online. It's expensive, though. Uh, you're going to just gonna have to find somewhere that would actually sell you legit titanium in a big plate. Uh, well, it depends. If he's managing to sell them at that price, he's not stupid, is he? It, it totally depends. Um, you know, if you're selling something and people are willing to pay over the top money for it, that's not stupid. As I said, you could just buy a gas moth repair kit and get loads and loads of the bits like I did, like the one B-Store sent me that has all the bits in. Well, I can't answer your previous question because you didn't ask one. You just put a question mark in. Ask the question again if you have a question, but there's no question in the chat I can see. I do have it set to top chat again, not live chat, because for some reason it YouTube puts it on one where you can't see questions, which is brilliant. Yeah, uh, that's the Scott GSR. It's not a good mask. I just think it looks cool. So, um, yeah, the Scott GSR. Do not buy one if you want one for personal protection. They're good on paper, awful in reality, because they had very bad quality control issues. But um, I think it looks cool. That's the thing, it does look cool. Um, so it's good for a picture, but, you know, if I had to pick a mask to use out of my collection for protection reasons, it would be the CT12, FM12, or the Forshida, just because they're very comfortable, you know, and made from very good materials. You can buy just titanium body armor stuff, but it's just very, very expensive. Well, a GP5 and FP5 filter I'd actually trust a lot more, to be honest, than the GSR. Um, as, as I've been saying all throughout the stream and every other stream, I can only get masks that I see for sale at reasonable prices. Whenever I've looked for Japanese masks, I've never seen ones for good prices plus shipping that I'd be able to get. But I always have to repeat myself on that for some reason. I don't think he wants replica though, I, I think he wants the actual titanium, because replica's a bit pointless if you're buying it for body armour, unless it's made from the exact same material. I think I spent about 10 or 15 pounds on it, um, it just really depends what's available at the time obviously. If you were in Bosnia, I think you said, you're going to find Yugoslavian equipment very cheaply there, whereas in the UK obviously it's not because you have to find somebody exporting it or you know, a surplus seller with it. But the exact same thing applies to everything. It's like I can get an S10 very cheaply in the UK when lots of people abroad, you know, having to pay loads of money for it. Most expensive mask I ever bought was XM28 uh, E4, which is the grasshopper mask, because they're rare enough as it is, and it's an American mask, so you can't find them in the UK very easily. And then one turned up um, on an eBay auction. I think I bid nearly three, uh, not three hundred. I think I nearly bid a hundred pounds for it, and then that was the winning bid. Yeah, it's a bit pointless. Then I would never buy something like that if it didn't offer protection. It's like with all the airsoft gear. I do not understand why people pay sometimes near the price of the real stuff for equipment that offers no protection. Just buy the actual surplus stuff. Yeah. Do not pay $200 for an S10, it's a good mask, but it's not worth that. If you're paying the amount of money that you could get brand new masks for, get like a brand new mask from an actual supplier. Uh, the SLR I think was £395, but that was quite a few years ago. It's legal, but that doesn't mean you won't get arrested for it. There's lots of things that are legal on paper, but are not. Yeah, you often get them for £30 as well in the UK. Uh, I've already suggested not to bother with homemade gas masks before, um, because they really only work against tear gas and that's about it. Don't rely on one. Um, you have to hope it dries out before it damages the filter, but if you don't get it um, <clears throat> you know, dried out in time where it's damaged, it's just become a useless filter, because if the charcoal leaks or the particulate filter crumbles, the, masks ha the filter's had it, basically. 
you can at least buy S10s and Avon masks domestically though in Australia because the Australian army does use either the S10 or the FM12 because they've always bought sort of Avon or made sort of Avon British stuff. Uh, yeah, the prices on all deactivated guns have gone up now because of the new EU laws. If you're buying a deactivated gun, you should have got them a while ago because they do less things now um, and they cost even more. There's, you know, there's no point really getting the axe anymore just because of how much they fucked them um, with the law changes. It's like it was bad enough when they went to new spec from old spec because all my stuff's new spec deac. But then of course they decided that that wasn't you know deactivated enough, so they had to you know weld even more bits shut. So lots of the EU spec deactivated guns now you can't even take the mags out. In lots of them, they like weld the mags in, weld the charging handles. You know, there's almost no point in getting them. Because you can't, you know, do a partial strip of them or anything. Yeah, it's a lot of my guns I can't dry fire. It totally depends on how they've done the gun. My Enfield I can dry fire, but that's about it. I can't really mod the cheap mask, mate, because I wouldn't have. You'd need to be able to cut the mask off and then make it take 40 millimeter filters. You know where the cheeks are, so I can't really do that myself. And I don't buy masks to vandalize them. When my friend eventually finds it, I'll do a video on the Mark IV we modified to take actual 40 millimeter filters. Uh, the old uh, Mark IV GSR from World War Two. Yeah, my Enfield can dry fire, but that's it. Uh, most of the, uh, like, you know, assault rifles and submachine guns, they took that feature off a while ago. Especially because so many of them are open bolt, and in theory, if you could dry fire an open bolt gun, you wouldn't need to do much to it to actually get it shooting because of how simple open bolt mechanisms are. No, I've not been to Bosnia. I said to you before, I haven't been to any Yugoslavian country, or, you know, Balkans country. It's somewhere I'd like to go, but I've not been to Serbia or Croatia or Bosnia or Macedonia or anywhere like that. I've been to Slovakia, but I've not been to Slovenia. I'll search what that is, mate, but I don't know what it is on the top of my head. No, I've never tried that. That's some sort of food thing. Well, the, um, the thing is, GP5 filters and all that, it depends if they leak or not, doesn't it? Because anything with asbestos, as long as the asbestos doesn't leak, they're perfectly safe. It's just, uh, over time, asbestos breaks down and crumbles when it's been woven into things. Then when you inhale that dirt, you know, dust all those fibres, that's where you start getting lung damage. Uh, there's a thing called a black market eagle, you buy them on there, or you just... Simply go into a hardware store and buy a spray painting mask. There you go, you've got a gas mask. Same thing. Um, well, in terms of how deadly it is, nerve agents, because something like a VX, you know, you don't stand a chance of surviving it, but at least it would be quick, I guess. Out of all the chemical weapons, the nastiest one is probably lewisite, which is like mustard gas on steroids. Uh, Lewisite very quickly destroys the eyes and skin that's been exposed to it, you know, blistering it, burning it, everything like that. And even if you initially survive the Lewisite and were horribly scarred by it, you normally get, I think it's either liver or kidney failure from it, like, you know, poisoning the bloodstream. And you can get skin cancer and stuff like that, even if you survive that, due to the damage it's done or to your skin. Uh, I can check how many Russian viewers I get. I know I'm getting more Russian viewers now. Um... 5,000 odd, 5 to 6,000 from the start of this month to where we are in a month now. But yeah, I'm mostly popular in the US, I think, for obvious reasons, because I'm very sort of First and Second Amendment, sort of 1776 style method of thinking, I guess. Uh, I don't even look into what competition I have, um, because I normally talk to channels that do similar content to me, because I don't consider them enemy channels or anything like that, like I said, I like weapon collector stuff. Um, but I just talk about stuff you're actually interested in, because if you're not interested in it, there's no point doing videos on it. Uh, 
Um, I've got some Polish um, MP5 straps on the uh, MCU at the moment, which kind of work, but I do think there's a leak in the silicon at the front. I've done videos on shit, it's the fan mate, it totally depends on what the event is. I'm not massively educated, um, I went to school if that's what you mean, past school didn't fail that, but um, I mostly read up on my own stuff, I don't um, have you know qualifications to talk about anything. Alright cool, I will have a look at that, I've read Fatherland. Yeah, I did say about American views earlier, I've had um, 210k so far this month. Yeah, I'm sure we will at some point, but it's if both of us have time and are able to, uh, you know, do one. But as I've said, he doesn't live too far away from me, so at some point when I've got my car, I'm sure we can do a meet-up video when we're both free and feel like doing it. How long have I been streaming for now? 41 minutes. Like I said, today I'll probably go over an hour, but that's as long as the conversation keeps moving. Like I said, Port and Down don't barely do anything on respirator design anymore. It's all private companies. Yeah, exactly. Um... Portant, the F6 is the last mass port and down had any input on. What it is now is um, basically companies come up with their own respirator designs and you pick one. And if you get a bribe to pick one, that's the one you pick. That's how armies buy their equipment now. This military industrial complex. It's like in the US, um, it's not the um, that they had in the 40s and 50s, you know, like the board of ordnance that picked all the hardware. What's ha ha ha? Like I said, if you've not been watching my videos for ages, you knew I had problems with my old car, so I was selling it. And I was getting a new car, but I've not got the new car yet. But I'm getting that on Sunday. Alright, thank you very much, Ick. Ick been super, that's a super review. Uh, for a euro, cheers. Uh, well, I've already got the SLR, which I like. I wouldn't mind a Bren gun, to be honest. Um, uh, I've never watched his stuff, mate. Duke, that Duke New Good Bye. I know he's a guy who criticizes my videos and barely has any subscribers, so, um, you know. He can, he can shout into the wind as much as he wants, but like I said, I've never really watched his stuff. I don't have anything against him, but I know he's like somebody of far less views than me that's very critical on my videos, which is probably why. Um, you know, rather than making his own content, I think he hates on me. But like I said, I've never watched his stuff, so that might be a bit unfair. But I know lots of people said he said one thing, I've said another thing. My stuff is generally quite well researched when I say something. I think he is the guy, isn't he, that said, you can't test a gas mask with air freshener for some reason. Yeah, hello Russia. Like I said, thumbs up. I've had a lot of um, views from Russia, not loads, but... Uh, I've done videos on what mask you should get, but it really depends on what country you're in and what's available to you, because, like, I recommend the S10 and the FM12, but if you're in a country where you can't buy those, you know. Tough one, actually, between the Legion and, um... Uh, the New California Republic because the NCR is obviously a lot better on paper but it's not really a democracy uh, the NCR is basically um, you know they go in they take stuff over um, and then they have lots of bloated bureaucracy that doesn't work whereas as brutal as the Legion seems to be um, you know Caesar actually understands that to um, rule that you need to actually you know in a wasteland you need to be very authoritarian um, but the thing is obviously when Caesar dies would the Legion fall apart in Fallout. Yeah, there's some really good... Oh, I'll tell you a gun I would like is the Sturmgewehr 57 or the Sig 510. Um, you know, the really ugly but very cool um, old Sig Sauer battle rifle.
Well, yeah, I think they should have gone with the FM12 or they should have gone with the Avon M50. The thing is, they had a load of requirements for a mask, and the two masks that met those requirements was the what is now known as the GSR, the Scott mask, and the Avon M50. They did a load of trials, and you can read up on this, this is public domain knowledge. They did the trials, and the M50 pretty much won every trial. So, you know, they did the trials, and the result was that the M50 was the clear winner. So, you know, so they said, obviously, well, that's great, the M50 is what we need to go with. But then Scott said, wow, we'll sell you our GSR really, really cheap, because, um, you know, otherwise you're not going to pick it. And they said, well, we could go with the mask that works, or we could go with the really cheap-ass mask. So let's go with the cheap-ass mask. Maybe there was a bribe involved as well, and now the troops have a mask that needs to be changed again. Right, cool, you see you, Nelly. Yeah, but if I was, like I said, if I'm going to Chernobyl, I'm going to be doing it completely legally. You know, doing it on a proper tour where there'll be no questions or stuff like that. Uh, I'm not sure about the Diana air rifle off the top of my head. There's lots of air rifles I really like, but um, sadly in the UK, you're limited to 12 foot pounds unless you're buying it on a firearms certificate. Well, the thing is, though, with... The thing is, the whole point in the GSR and M50 was that they were meant to be higher... You know, like, the whole thing with, like, locking filters. You know, when you take them off, you can't breathe. That was because, you know, the threat from nerve agent. So, they basically needed masks that were higher in requirements to, um... The older masks. But then they decided, um, you know... Because this one's so cheap, even though it barely functions as a respirator... Let's pick that. So, that's what you've got with the GSR. It's literally as simple as that. You had two masks, one that was very good, supposedly, the Avon M50, although, you know, it does have some issues not being a 40mm mask, but that's the road they wanted to go down. Um, and then they literally had the mask that was a cheap piece of crap that failed all the trials, but then because they put in a really low bid for the Scott GSR, they then just issued that mask. Sadly, I don't know of anybody that makes modern NBC suits. Um... You mean there's the mask pole ones um, from Poland, like the um, Fu One suit I did a video on. That's very good, uh, very good. But um, that suit, you know, is a bit expensive depending on what you want. Or you could just buy the old rubber NBC suit and they'd be fine. Maybe companies like 3M, because you can get like the Tychem suits from Dupont. So yeah, maybe a Dupont Tychem suit. Um, but I don't know many companies that just you know actually make modern suits for the most part, because most of it's like military stuff. Yeah, exactly. That we had a problem near us where um, there was a roundabout that was a bit of a pain in the ass, but it was mostly fine on like one of the really high traffic roads. Um, and then they decided they were going to put traffic lights on the roundabout, but they couldn't just put traffic lights on the roundabout. They had to re-engineer the roundabout for some reason. You know, like cut it a few um, inches wider, I guess, all across the roundabout. Um, and it was a job that was meant to be done in a couple of months. It went a couple of years over budget and, um, you know, over time, and it meant that the traffic was at gridlocked for most of the point. So you think, well, why don't we go around, you know, and take a longer route? But then, of course, they just, the council decided as soon as they had their budget, they had to hire different companies to do all the roundabouts in the area at the same time. So what you ended up with is basically traffic that barely moved for ages, so it was far worse than it was originally, and now it's been finished. You say this is marginally better, but was it worth all the effort? Uh, Weapon Collector did a video update on that. Um, they they've made the bill now, but it's if the bill gets pushed through, and the bill is really stupid because it's basically um, you know loads of stuff that was w at one point perfectly legal is now totally illegal to even own. But will you even be given an amnesty on it? Who knows? Um, and there's lots of stuff where it's also still very vague. So you know the law doesn't make much sense. I've been reading it and there's bits where I'm totally clueless if something's legal or illegal because of how badly it's worded and it doesn't, you know, explain more detail. Under this new bill they've also said if you have a butter knife in your pocket, a butter knife with no point and no blade, you can still get 10 years for carrying a bladed weapon. Um, 
the British Mark IV suits are fine, but they have the same problem with all those fabric suits, that the charcoal's probably expired, and it's not designed to be really waterproof, it's just sort of water resistant until it suddenly floods. Um, that's why I like the old rubber suits more, because you can trust rubber that it's not going to suddenly let water through after a while. Uh, well, I don't think they'll sell it to civilians, but I think eventually, you know, they'll just get sold as surplus to civilians. But yeah, the enhanced combat helmet does look very good if it lives up to the expectations. Because um, I've been reading into it, but it's a bit like this whole thing with Britain where um, we had the Mark VII helmet that was totally fine, level 3A, same as everybody, uh, you know, everybody else's modern military helmets. Um, that helmet, um, you know, was fine, serviceable. They then decided, for whatever reason, they needed to get the advanced combat helmet. Um, and then, of course, they then decided, well, rather than buying into some really cool new tech, like the enhanced combat helmet, you know, a thermoplastic helmet, let's just buy another brand of Kevlar helmet and spend loads of taxpayers' money on it. So, you know, the new helmet Britain's getting might be marginally better than the Mark VII, but it's only going to be marginally better because it offers the same level of protection. I think it's just a bit lighter and has rails on it, so... <laughs> yeah, I've had problems with Hermes before, um, where they've not delivered stuff. Yeah, that's a good price for the East German NBC suit, 8 euros. Fabric NBC suits are horrible in the heat as well. Rubber's just worse, but there's no comfortable NBC suit. <laughs> that, that's the you know like a concept that doesn't exist. Supposedly, but they've made big mentions of it in the new bill. And the police were boasting the other day on Twitter that they pulled over a motorist and he had a butter knife in his lunchbox, and now they're charging him. Like I said, we're in a police state. I don't really give a fuck about the law um, anymore. I'm not condoning anybody to do anything illegal, but if they get to the stage where you can't carry even a Swiss army knife on you, I'll probably just carry a big lock knife on me, to be honest, because why the fuck not? And it's the whole problem is this stupid reasonable excuse law, where it's, you know, do you have a reason for carrying it? Okay, yes. Well, the policeman has to agree with that reason, otherwise you get dragged to court, have to pay loads of legal fees, um, you know, just to be told, oh yeah, you were totally entitled to be doing that in the first place, like that disabled man they did for having a Swiss army knife in his fucking van. It's like, who the fuck is petty enough to arrest a disabled man for having a butter knife in his van? Not butter knife, um, Swiss army knife. Uh, yeah, well, there, you should be physically good in good shape all the time anyway, and there's no excuse to be a slob. Yeah, but like I've just said, the thing is with a knife being a knife, is if you sharpen a butter knife, it's not a butter knife anymore. That's totally different than saying you've got a blunt butter knife, as butter knife should be, in your pocket for whatever reason, part of a lunch bag. Oh, well, that was a deadly assault lunch bag, that is. You've got that on there for you committing crimes. Well, I don't think I'd let him take me away, mate. I won't say any more about that. Um, well, I can't link it easily, but it was one of those things on Twitter where everybody screen-capped it and were taking the piss out of the police, you know, where they do those weapon sweeps. But I might be able to find you that Swiss Army knife one where they did the bloke or his disabled wife, whatever, for having a Swiss Army knife in a camping van. Have you seen the one um, from years ago where they arrested some art student because he had a Stanley knife in his art kit and then they couldn't understand why somebody doing art at college would need a Stanley knife? That was um, annoying. That story I'm looking for is now coming up with loads of things um, with actual knife crimes, Swiss Army knives. Now, not actually the thing I'm looking for. But yeah, I'm being totally truthful when I say they did do somebody for having a knife in a lunchbox and they were boasting about it on Twitter as usual. You know, Rob, should we catch some paedophile gangs? Should we catch people throwing acid? No, let's, let's go after people with fucking, uh, uh, you know, butter knives in their lunchbox. Aren't we good police officers? No, plastic knives are perfectly legal, but lots of stores don't even sell plastic knives to people under 18 now. Oh, but saying that, no, they'd say a plastic knife was a stealth knife, wouldn't they, under this new law? Um, if you've got a plastic knife, it's so it can't be seen on the metal detector, so it's um, a stealth knife. Unless you're using it for cooking, then it's okay, because the laws are fucking stupid. 
Again, it's because the police go after easy arrest tree man. So rather than arresting actual gangs, you know, with massive fucking knives and like machetes on them, what they do is they say, oh, well, you know, we caught this totally innocent person who complied with a search and now we found a butter knife on them or whatever. So now we're, you know, going to throw the full extent of the law at them. Did you see that video the other day where um, a motorcycle gang tried to abduct a little girl, probably to rape and murder, um, in London, but luckily there was a load of um, like construction workers that ran over and started trying to beat him up. Um, and then the media was trying to spin it not as an abduction thing, but you know they were just trying to rob these people, yeah, by trying to snatch a little girl, you're trying to rob people. But again, the police aren't going to deal with that, are they? Because that would require officers on the street um, you know, to actually be trained and armed to deal with that. This country is just a fucking joke at this point. I'll have a look, I don't watch Count Dankula's stuff, but I know he's got pretty red-pilled since um, all the trouble he had for making a joke. The funny thing about um, that is the actual Nazis didn't even um, do somebody, did they, for doing a similar thing back in the day? Um, they ruled there wasn't enough evidence to prosecute somebody at making fun of the Nazis or something using their dog, so they let it slide. So the actual Gestapo won't charge you, but the British police will. That does say something, doesn't it? I actually don't know, I don't know. <laughs> That's funny that you said that. Yeah, well, like I'm saying, the actual police aren't too bad, but the issue is that they are now just a political yes-men, so if the politicians say to get funding, you need to do this, do that. But a big problem with the police is a while ago they were switched from actually having, you know, lots of foot patrols to now just responding to it. I think um, it's called, like, fireman policing or something like that. And the idea is that rather than having people wandering around, you know, to try and act as, a, act as a preventative measure to crime, it's you have to wait for something to happen and somebody to call the police for them to turn up. And obviously prevention is much better than actually conviction. If you prevent somebody getting stabbed to death over his wallet, that's much better than somebody getting stabbed to death over his wallet to then throw somebody in prison for ten years over doing it. Yeah, you can buy the M2000s on eBay as well, it's very expensive. Yeah, I like dogs and cats, so I volunteer the Blue Cross. Well, I can't get into America because I don't have a visa. I'll go on holiday to America at some point, but I can't get citizenship. We've covered this every stream. Uh, I did a video on volcanic masks, mate. You'll want to get something with... um acidic filters which are also ones that will cover you against um, sulfur dioxide but you also want a particle filter to stop smoke and ash getting in as well I doubt I could afford to buy an island. It's going to be even more expensive than getting a US visa. Right, shall we have a look on Google? What's the latest thing that's happened with violent crime in the UK? Let, let's see what the latest thing is. Oh, uh, do you want to hear uh, rampant feminism go mad? Women will only be jailed for serious crimes, Justice Secretary revealed. So, okay, women can commit crimes now, and I guess they only get a fine. And how do we define serious crime? Uh, but, you know, it doesn't surprise me because their uh, prisons are overpopulated. They don't even really want to pay prison guards anymore. Uh, there's rise in violent crimes and when the UK councils. Doesn't surprise me. Woman found stabbed to death in her garden. Police in Sheffield grapple with surge in violent crime. Yeah, it sounds like typical shit, and that's the stuff that you see on the mainstream news sources, not the actual stuff that's probably going on they don't even report on. Uh, P3 filters are fine because they're particulate filters. Reactor filters, I think, are just P3 filters of something in that's... I think they impregnate iodine into the filter. I think that's how it works. Yeah, Amphrax Island would be pretty cool. I wouldn't be able to afford it. 
No, there isn't mandatory military service in the UK. They got rid of national service years ago. Yeah, so when I was at school, somebody stabbed somebody, I think, through the eye socket with a pencil. Or, like, through their nose, doing serious damage to them with a pencil. The thing is, anything is a weapon if you have violent intent, right? Um, let's look. What's on my table at the moment? I've got a mug. I could smash a mug over somebody's head and then stab them with the bit of ceramic that's left on it. Um, I've got my canteen. That's made of metal. So I could club somebody with the canteen. If that's filled with water, that weighs over a kilo. You know, that would do brain damage, hitting somebody in the head with that fast. Got lots of pocket knives that are really small. Again, just used for utility reasons, but if I go for your neck with that, that'll do serious damage. Yeah, pick up a rock, throw a rock, or hit somebody with a rock. Punch somebody in the head, they fall over onto the concrete, bash their head, kill them. Yeah, that would do it. Everything is a weapon if you intend to use it as it. There's there's no point. Um, no, slingshot's illegal. I might get a new slingshot, actually, because my old ones, I think the bands are pretty much decayed, but getting a slingshot to mess about with would be fun. I'll probably get another one. No, I've said every time I'm not doing giveaways because then you encourage people to subscribe just for giveaways who won't be active subscribers and I collect stuff because I like collecting it, not to collect and resell or give away or whatever. Um, watch my videos, that kid, because I've done lots of videos on masks I'd recommend that you can get in various places for different price ranges, so the video will explain it better than me saying it now. Yeah, most CBRN type companies do not sell to private individuals unless you know somebody in the company. You know, it's for like bulk orders for a thing. I mean, whether or not you work somewhere where you can justify it for work use and say, you know, I want to buy a really good mask, then they might do it. Like, because I do charity volunteering and I need a respirator for what I do for that, I actually imagine I could contact some of these companies and say, look, I do this charity volunteering, I need a respirator, your respirator looks very good, would you sell it me? And then I'm sure they would, because that's a good sale and, you know, it's good for their PR. But most companies, if you just said, oh, I want to buy a gas mask from you, they basically say, well, what's your use for it? Well, well I just want to buy one, no, but we're not selling it to you. Um, that's kind of how it would work with most companies. Uh, well, I don't like the GSR for obvious reasons, just because I think it's a bit of a death trap if you're issued one. Uh, cheek filter masks I don't particularly like, but I can see why they thought they were a good idea at the time, as they were obviously weren't. I don't quite get your comic comment, Alex, but yes, fists are a weapon if you punch somebody with them. You can store a filter by doing that, but it's going to expire faster than if you left the filter, fi uh, the filter sealed properly. Yeah, if you were buying one, I'd always cite some sort of work reason for using it, and then just say, you know, you feel a lot more comfortable buying a very good military CBRN high quality mask than using, like, a dust mask. I think that's a good enough reason because, but like I said, you can now and again buy this stuff second hand on eBay. Yeah, I've got a military backpack and I keep meaning to do a video on it, but I've not got around to cleaning it out and filling it up yet, so that's why I've not done a video on it. I'll get around to it at some point. I think I know which ones you mean. You mean the ones that are intended for cyclists, don't you? The ones where it's a uh, charcoal like half face mask. So the idea is it's both a particle mask and has a bit of charcoal in, so when you're cycling you don't inhale all the fumes from cars. I think that's the ones you mean. They're actually kind of cool. I might do a video on them at some stage, because I think they're a lot better than the, you know, like the little dust masks. I kind of don't believe that they'd stop somebody eating with their hands on a plane, if that's what you're saying. Uh, MSA Millennium is better than the MCU2P, it's the successor mask of it. If you eat asbestos, you uh, completely destroy your stomach and die. Uh, NBC suits stop alpha radiation if they're thick enough they stop beta radiation but no they do not stop gamma because you need thick concrete or lead to stop gamma 
If you look at the videos of the Chernobyl liquidators, lots of them have just got bits of lead hanging off of them via bits of rope. Um, that's what you need to do. Well, if it's Alibaba, I doubt it's a real 3M one, but you get, there's lots of masks, as I said, like the cycling ones you can get, where it's like a particle mask with a bit of charcoal in it. Um, you know, they're designed to just be disposable masks worn by cyclists or people just doing nuisance work. Um, well, the Soviets mass produced the GP5, so because they made 100 million of them, I don't think it cost them very much at all. What do you mean, what am I eating? I'm not eating anything. Uh, it's probably because Millennium's like the MCU. I assume are made of silicon mostly, aren't they? And as I said, silicon is not a good material to make masks from. It's comfortable, that's why people like it, but it's not a good material just because it reacts to everything. Polyurethane, or whatever it's called, is actually a better material, like the Polish MP5 uses. No, I am not a commie. Russia still makes ghost filters, and that's about it. Okay, so, but they didn't use butyl like a sensible thing would be. I get asked every stream about MREs and I suspect it's becoming a joke now, but no, I will not do videos on MREs because I am not wasting my money spending £30 for a day's worth of food. Like I've said loads of times, you can make your own MREs if you wanted to for a fraction of the cost. Yeah, so they should have just made the mask out of butyl rubber, like most sensible modern companies do, but they didn't. Okay. It's a shame, because MSA used to be a really good company, but it seems a lot of MSA stuff has been fairly crap recently, a bit like with Scott, and that's why Scott fell apart, because rather than making good masks, they just made shit for ages, and then just charged barely anything for that shit. Weapon Collector's already done a load of videos like that, so I'd really just advise you watch his, but mine would mostly be rice I could boil. Um, you know, like the biscuits that don't go off, um, that are quite high in calories, a bit like ship's biscuit. Freeze-dried fruit would be good, but that's a bit more expensive. Yeah, I think the Millennium looks really cool, but like I said, the problem is that if they're going to make it out of crap rubber, then... Oh, um, the fire escape masks, you mean the ones that are just meant to protect your lungs a bit while you escape from a fire? There's also chemical escape masks, which are like disposable masks, but they're actually for chemical use, not fires. Uh, SF10s do get sold now and again, but they're much rarer than the S10, they cost a lot more. But they don't have many advantages over the S, um, S10, you're better just getting an F, uh, FM12 or a CT12, because they're better than the SF10, and uh, normally cheaper because they're not as rare. Right, I'm pretty sure you're a troll now, mate, so um, bye. Yeah, like I said, MREs are stupidly expensive. If you're buying food for actual, you know, like rationing use, just go to the supermarket and buy stuff with really long dates on that's sealed properly. Especially the stuff you don't even have to cook. I wasn't on about you, mate. I was on about the guy saying that you shouldn't just buy a gas mask, you just hold your breath. Because he's been making a few stupid comments, so, you know, play stupid games, win stupid prizes. No, I didn't talk about you, I just said that. No, the rubber, I've got loads of old, I've got loads of old Soviet masks, and the rubber is fine on them. The latex the Soviets made them out of has kept perfectly well, as long as they've been um, stored properly. Uh, 
Um, the practical applications for them is obviously if you're close to a fire, um, you're not going to burn up as quickly as if you're in a fight next to a fire in regular clothes. Um, but other than that, they don't have much use, no. Yeah, see, five pounds for a ration pack isn't too bad, but I still wouldn't really pay that for them. I suppose five pounds for a day's worth of food is actually quite good, isn't it? But it's just I'm used to like 25 uh, pence packets of rice that make up one full meal. You know, like nearly 500 calories worth with rice and vegetables in a you know sealed packet that's 25 pence. So that's kind of you know how I'd make a ration pack stuff like that. Soviet masks are fine for the most part, at least GP5s, GP5Ms, MM1s, SHMSs, things like that. It's just the late Soviet masks were absolute crap because of you know the Soviet Union collapsing and the quality control being thrown out the window. Um, I'll tell you when the stream's going to be over. How long have I been doing it for now? An hour and ten minutes. I'll do another ten minutes and then I'll finish it. Yeah, so five pounds for three meals uh, for a whole day, so 2,000 to 3,000 calories worth isn't too bad, actually. But, like I say, lots of ration packs get sold for stupid amounts of money, so that's why I'd never, you know, get any. Let me have a look at that. Kareen Aparaga. Let's Google it. Cheers. I've searched F2 and A4 and there's no results. Let me search for Shida. No, nothing's coming up. I mean, I know it's in... Um, is it an Italian site? But I'm not getting any results for the for Shida. Let me look at the um, categories and I'll see if um, I can find it through there. My room's getting horribly hot now because obviously um, I've not got the fans on all the doors open while I'm streaming. No, they've got Mark 7 helmets on there though, um, for like £109. Oh sorry, 109 euros, that's a bit expensive. But yeah, I can't find any gas masks on there. Again, I don't speak Italian, so using Google Translate doesn't translate it all that well. Uh, did they die in the woods or did they just become ill and then have to get rescued or whatever? Uh, Avon FM12 because you can often get them for the same price as the S10s now and they're better masks than the S10. Right, cool. I'll try searching for gas, but if it's not a site in English, then gas isn't going to actually get results, is it? Let's search gas. There's a GSR on there for 200 euros. Wow, what a good piece of uh, equipment. Uh... Fucking hell, they have um, the M95 for 52 euros. That's a much better price. But do they ship to the UK? Because if they don't, then it's pointless me looking at this. Oh, it's a Scott version of the M95. I don't want to buy that. Oh, I'm disappointed now. I was hoping it would be like the Finn versions where they're domestically made. Yeah, I'm off in a few minutes, Mike. He joined right at the end.
I'm doing a video on the self-defense loadout one. It's already filmed. It'll be up next week. So um, watch that video when it comes out, and you'll see all the helmets and the body armor and everything. Yeah, it's probably the M95, yeah. I mean, I, you see M95s on thing, but one, when I get an M95, I want to get the finish made ones, because this is the thing with Scott. Um, Scott designed the mask, and the mask is quite good, but Scott, as we know, is known for not making things to a very good quality standard. Um, so I don't want to spend that kind of money on a Scott mask that's probably falling apart. However, when they sold them to Finland, Finland built them under license, and the Finnish versions are renowned for being very good, because the design is fundamentally good, so when you make them from very good components, like high rubber quality, um, the mask is very good. So from what I've heard is if you get an M95, you on purposely try and get the Finnish built versions, not the Scott actual originals. Yeah, you I mean you can do, but like I said, I'm probably not going to order from them because I only really like to order from in the UK if I can as well, or through a place like eBay. Because when customs like to steal my parcels, I like you know to be able to get a refund. Whereas if I'm buying from you know a site, I'm having to use Google Translate to buy and then arrange a courier myself. Um, I'm going to be a lot more likely if customs steal it to be just totally fucked out of my money. But like I said, the M95 is an interesting mask. I just if I get one, I, I'd rather just find a Finnish one. I'm hoping, if I have time, I can do a stream tomorrow night, and then I can do it, you know, so a lot of the Americans can join in. But, um, like I said, it's actually easier for me to do streams during the morning, or, like, early afternoon, just because I'm less likely to have stuff on in the evening. And because the chat moves slower, because less people join, it means I'm actually able to talk with people properly, rather than the chat moving so fast I can't keep up with it. And then people getting angry that I miss their questions constantly. Yeah, the new Russian filters are perfectly fine to use, but for the most part I've seen very few of them being sold, you know, for reasonable money. Polish FP5 filters are much cheaper. Okay, so, yeah, I suppose if you're on the East Coast, it's not going to be too far behind, is it? Um, but yeah, lots of people have complained when I've done streams at this sort of time that it's too early for Americans, but I suppose if they get up... Because the Americans are my majority of my subscribers are American. Because I like the First and Second Amendment and I like weapons, which Americans do. It should be fairly obvious. Alright, see you, Boris. Yeah, I've also noticed that a lot of the trolls uh, are generally only on in late afternoon or um, like the evening. Because I'm assuming it's somebody in a time zone where they're either at work or whatever else or they're not up yet. Um, when you do streams at this time of day, so very rarely do I see them on here. I've, I've had to ban a few people today, Mike, because they kept talking about illegal things when I told them not to, or were talking about terrorist groups and stuff like that. Um, a couple of people just are being silly, where they keep asking the same question when I answer that they wouldn't really listen, but for the most part it's been fine, it's not been an organised thing. Um... But yeah, the one that annoyed me, you'll see me uh, get angry if you rewatch the stream, was a guy who was asking me about helmets. I told him, you know, like, the information I knew. Um, and then it was like he wanted to start an argument because he couldn't understand that titanium is a better armour than Kevlar. Um, so when I was on about Russian, like, titanium helmets, you know, like, being much better than Kevlar helmets, obviously they're a lot more expensive and they're very hard to find. He was saying, no, they're no better than um, the Kevlar helmets. I was like, well, they totally are, because you can watch tests where people shoot both of them, and you'll see the titanium helmets always do better than the Kevlar helmets, because it's a fixed slab of titanium. No, they don't. If, if you got shot with a gun, it would go through both, or it, it would not go through... Um... That person came on my video, Mike, and was asking me to cut my hair on a video, and I blocked him. Well, if you notice in my streams, I say I don't like talking about politics, but sometimes I get drawn into it just because of, um... Oh, getting a Dacia Sandero, mate, or Dacia Sandero, top model one of the, um, Sandero. Because they're cheap and they're apparently very reliable, and I basically want a car just to get around in. So as much as I've had a lot of fun in the Golf, I had to sell the Golf just because when anything went wrong on it, it was getting more and more expensive to repair because it was 18 years old. And luckily the person who bought the Golf ended up obviously being a bit of a Golf enthusiast, so it's obviously somebody who was really wanting a Golf who bought it from me, so that's good. 
Yeah, I was saying about that helmet earlier, it's a waste of money in my opinion. I think it's marginally better than the Mark 7 helmet, but not better enough that they need to replace the Mark 7s just after putting them into service. Um, especially when, if we wanted to buy a new helmet, we should be making the firmer plastic helmets like America's doing now, which are better than the Kevlar ones. Because those, those new American helmets, um, they offer, I think it's something like 45% more protection, because the, the plastic's better than the Kevlar. Um, and the thing is with those helmets is that they're, you know, lighter, so you can make them thicker because they're lighter, because they're made out of a type of plastic, not Kevlar. Uh, they don't degrade like Kevlar does, although Kevlar degrading is kind of overrated anyway, because as long as you keep the helmet dry or the Kevlar body armor dry, it doesn't really go out of date. Um, but again, it's like, we could have either bought a helmet like that, that, you know, was you know, miles better than the helmet we had, or we could buy a helmet that's almost identical to the helmet we have and spend loads of money. Yeah, listen, the only thing is, if you buy a used Golf, they are great cars, just obviously be prepared. The older go the older the Golf is, the more you're going to have to keep spending it to keep it roadworthy, just because, like, that's the problem I had with my Golf. Yeah, the thing is, what's good about the Dacias and the Dacias is that basically, they're owned by Renault now, but Originally, it was because they were cars that were Romanian and they were just designed for economies where people didn't have the money to buy, you know, cars for, you know, that needed a lot of work done on them. The whole point was they were very simple cars that were very reliable, um, you know, so they were cheap to buy and cheap to keep running. Um, and then that's why they started selling really well. And um, Renault ended up buying them out because they wanted the factories to make more Renault cars because originally Dacia's were like Renault built under license anyway. Um, and then Renault realised they were actually kind of onto something when they could just sell massive volumes of the Dacia cars because people wanted them. Are you getting a Mark V Golf then? Well, I've heard mixed things because lots of people have said the Virtuous helmet, whatever it's called, isn't as good as the Mark VII. The Mark VII has a really good liner in it, so I don't see how people can complain that's uncomfortable. It's got the right amount of padding, it's got a good chin strap and everything else. And I've even seen videos where people have modified Mark 7s to put custom liners in them when they wanted to. So like I said, if we were buying a new helmet, there was no point getting this. We should have got the, um, like, got, you know, developed or bought the helmet the Americans are now fielding, which is massively better in protection. But yeah, Golf from 2005 should be fine. I'm sure that's going to be a Mark 5. So anyway, I find the Mark 7 perfectly comfortable, so that wouldn't be a good reason enough for me. But like you said, it, that you can put new liners in old helmets. There's nothing stopping you doing that. There's loads of YouTube channels where they do that. But the most comfortable liner I've actually had in this helmet is either probably a Mark 7 or my old East German M56, because the East German helmet has a really good liner in it. Like, it's a really good three-point lever liner. You know, with all the right padding in the right places and everything else. But my whole point is, why spend two grand on a helmet, you know, when we're supposedly making military cuts? If you're going to spend that sort of money, develop something better. Don't just say, this perfectly good helmet needs to be replaced by a marginally better helmet. Replace it with something a lot better, or don't bother, in my opinion. Alright, see ya. I'm hopefully you'll do a stream tomorrow night, as said, but I don't know if I will be able to. Yeah, Pascot, the M88, then they did the, um, like, lightweight version of the Pascot, which was slightly better. I think the protection was slightly not as great, but not by, you know, a big amount, but it was apparently a lot more comfortable and lighter. Um, and then, yeah, like I said, the Mark 7 is very similar to a Pascot, though. But to be honest, I'd rather look like a goof and stay alive than, you know, look cool and have my head ventilated. That'd be good, wouldn't it, if North Korea totally gets collapsed, reunified, and then all the North Korean surplus is sold really cheap. Yeah, it looks a bit silly, but like I said, the M56 is a great helmet. It was the best steel helmet of the Cold War in terms of physical protection. Well, if North Korea is merged with South Korea, they'll have to sell off all the stuff to try and make money back from North Korea, like they did with East Germany when it was merged into West Germany. They sold off all the surplus as quickly as they could. You can't really wear um, a Mark 7 with an S10. It doesn't work. The ridge at the top stops you wearing it. You can wear an FM12 with um, a Mark 7, but you can't, um, 
wear a uh, S10 with it because there's the NBC ridge at the top for the helmet, like the NBC hoods with the NBC suits and that stops the helmet going flush because I've had, that's the problem with pretty much every NBC sort of ridge on any of the masks I have, they don't fit with a lot of helmets. Anyway, how long have I been streaming for now? 1 hour 25 minutes, I guess I'll do 5 minutes more and then I'll call it a day for this stream. Yeah, I prefer the CT12 because I don't like drinking tubes, so I'd rather have a mask that's slightly lighter, slightly more robust, um, where I don't get poked in the face by a drinking tube. I can understand why, if you want a drinking tube, the FM12 is good. Yeah, like I said, most countries, if they collapse or whatever, will get reunified. The surplus is sold very quickly because they want to make a load of money from it. Like, they won't sell you, obviously, a lot of live firearms, but lots of helmets and masks and other bits get sold. So anything else to talk about before I finish the stream? It's all gone quiet all of a sudden. Now it's not a pocket flask, it's a big um, canteen, like um, a litre stainless steel canteen. Yeah, officially, exactly. I'm sure a lot of it will probably turn up on the black market saying that. Alright, cheers. Yeah, it was good to say, other than a few people being idiots, um, for the most part, it's been very good today. Like I say, at this time, I've never seen really organised trolling. You just get a couple of people being idiots. Like I say, if you bought something illegal, don't mention it in the stream, because we had one person today in the stream who said they bought something that they weren't sure if it was legal or not. You know, they could have Googled it to find out. I told him it wasn't legal, so I'd delete his comment, but not to talk about it anymore, and that guy proceeds to keep mentioning it over and over again, so, you know, that's why you got a block, because if you do something illegal, don't keep bringing it up, that's for your own safety. Um, but again, some of these people, I think, are just trolls or idiots, where I'm doing something illegal, let me keep mentioning I'm doing something illegal over and over and over in your stream. To be fair, it's not normally China supplying a lot of those terrorist groups. Uh, it's generally America. <laughs> you know, when you fund a terrorist group to get rid of a terrorist group you funded to get rid of a terrorist group you funded to get rid of a terrorist group you funded. Uh, maybe 8pm UK time. 8 to 9pm UK time, but I really don't know. It's gonna If I can do a stream, it will be around then, but often it depends what's going on and all stuff like that. And it's, you know, going to depend on how much energy I have, because that's the thing, I like doing streams at this time of day, because I'm properly alert and awake, but often in the evening I then, you know, I'm a bit tired, there's lots more people on, so the streams wear you out a lot faster. Yeah, exactly, there's lots of people that you either think they're trolls or they're just idiots, because... You know. It's when you explain, like, a rule to them, and they're like, okay, okay, I'll follow that rule, and then they just keep bringing something up. Like, when we've had your streams, Mike, where there's somebody who's, like, you know, they're, like, really anti-gay people, and then you say, well, I have nothing against gays, so let's stop talking about this, and then they keep bringing up how they don't like gays, and they're the ones always bringing it up. It's like that sort of thing where you have to start blocking people for that, and you think, fuck's sake, just, you know, keep your mouth shut. Yeah, and like I said, I know those old helmets we were talking about them earlier, you know. Because, um, you know, like I said, the titanium helmets are really bloody good. But there was a guy earlier in the stream going like, no, titanium is the exact same thing as Kevlar. And even when I was telling him it was and he wouldn't listen, so eventually he got a block just because I think he was arguing for the sake of arguing. No, Draeger filters are good. As long as it's the 40mm RD40 Draeger filters, that's great. Uh, ABEC 2P3 is very good. Um, just make sure they're in date, because um, I think I've said before, a lot of the time when I see s sellers saying they're selling new filters, they're not actually new, it's like, as in, they're still sealed, but they're out of date. There's a couple of those helmets, um, there's the one with, like, the big visor on, and then there's others with, um, you know, like, the actual metal visors. The metal ones are obviously, um, 
Well, the whole point is, like what I was saying, is there was when Weapon Collector did a stream, there were people um, who were, like, saying how much they hated gays and everything else, and he said, you know, that's your opinion, keep it to yourself, but I don't have a problem with them, so let's not talk about it. And then they kept bringing it back up, even when he said, you know, you're going to get a block if you keep talking about this, and then what, you know, surprise, surprise, they got a block, it's that kind of thing. No, the only rebreathers I've got, mate, are the um, IP4M and the IP5. And the IP4M is the only one I've got with the uh, CO2 scrubber. Yeah, that's the thing. That's why I like doing streams at different times, because you can't please everybody with time zones. Oh, again, it's it keeps everything nicer for everybody else, doesn't it? If you block people who end up being idiots or endangering themselves and other people, and that's the best way to do it. Like, people are welcome to think what they want to think, in my opinion, but it's just when they keep bringing it up when nobody asks them. And then you're not even talking about that in a the conversation. They can't help themselves just keep bringing it up over and over and over again. And then, then they moan that they get blocked. Well, you know, if, if you followed the rules that are clearly in the description, and, you know, I warned you about in advance. But like I said, it's like the people in this stream where you're talking about something. I've said what my opinion is. End of. No, they keep bringing it up. No, rebreathers are a perfectly good idea when they're used in the proper circumstances. But, like I said, where most people say rebreathers are bad, they're not on about, they think, for the job of a gas mask. Where a rebreather is not a gas mask, a rebreather is a very specialised piece of equipment. Most Russian masks are very good, apart from the GP7 and PMK. The old, um, like, Soviet ones are good. I've not got a GP9, sadly, so I can't comment on that. Anyway, like I said, I've been gone on for over an hour and a half now. My throat's getting a bit dry, so that will be the end of the stream. Thanks for watching, everybody. Um, so this has been mostly good over, other than the few people being idiots, as usual. Um, so hope everybody enjoyed the stream. Um, so yeah, see you, everybody. Right, bye.